Welcome YouTubers to another episode of my Grammar Hero series. In this video, I'm going to discuss the ASVAB, that is the Armed Services Locational Aptitude Battery. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to work out problems uh, from the mathematics knowledge section of that test. Um, before we get started, I just want to make a few general comments about the ASVAB. Um, the ASVAB is a test um, people take in order to join the US military. Um, doesn't matter what branch you want to join. This is one of the first things you'll do as soon as you initiate contact with any branch. Um, the test itself is, uh, as you can see on the left here, broken down into 10 sections. Um, including general science, arithmetic reasoning, word knowledge, and so on. Um, what's more, uh, the test is given in two different versions. So, for example, one version is called the CAT ASVAB, whereas the other version is called the P&P ASVAB. CAT, in case you're wondering, stands for a computer adaptive test. Uh, and P&P &P stands for pencil and paper. Uh, more often than not, you will be given the CAT ASVAB. So let me just highlight a few things about uh, that particular version. Um, overall, it's 145 questions. Um, it takes about 154 minutes to complete. And as far as the mathematics knowledge section goes, you can see that you have 20 minutes to do 16 questions. Uh, similarly, uh, in case you haven't taken a computer adaptive test before, uh, it works like this. Uh, the first question you're usually given is uh, moderate in terms of difficulty. If you get it right, you get a more difficult question. If you get that one right, you get a slightly more difficult question. And at the same time, uh, if you get that first question wrong, you'll get a slightly easier question, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, for this test, there is uh, no calculator whatsoever allowed. Um, that goes for every single section that you'll take of this exam. Uh, but I do believe uh, you'll be given either scrap paper or a white expo board on which you can work out some of these problems. So above all, I'm just going to note that no calculator is allowed on the test. Um, in case you, you're not familiar with the ASVAB, uh, you'll be given a score for each of these different sections. But um, what's most important is your uh, AF. QT score, your Armed Forces Qualification Test score. Um, basically, your AFQT score, I got a new mouse, so this isn't working out too well, is determined by how, how well you do on the arithmetic reasoning section, the word knowledge section, paragraph comprehension, and knowledge is with a K, not a C and uh, the mathematics knowledge, okay? So, in other words, uh, these four subsections of the test will be taken, added together, put in a formula, and you'll be given a score anywhere from 1 to 99. Um, you interpret your score um, like this. Uh, if you score a 95, for example, that means you scored better than 95% of all the test takers. Okay, um, it's important to do well uh, to get a good AFQT score. Um, the AFQT score is what tells the military one whether you're qualified to join the military, and two, you know what jobs you're qualified for. Um, as a rule of thumb, I like to tell people always try to score category three or above. So in other words, you want to score a 31 through a 99 on the ASVAB. Um, those requirements vary from service to service, as well as depending on each uh, candidate's background. For example, if you have a GED instead of a high school diploma, you may have to score slightly higher, like a 50 or so on. 
uh, those are questions you can direct at your recruiter. Um, so all that said, let's go ahead and get started with uh, some guided practice. Uh, I'm going to be working out these problems fairly slowly, uh, given that many of you probably haven't seen this material before. Um, and uh, if for some reason I touch on some concepts with which uh, you're, you're struggling, I would recommend that at some point you uh, pick up a copy of ASVAB for Dummies. Um, in that book, they actually break down each concept in greater detail. And in that book, there's also um, some full-length practice tests. Um, I'm going to post the link to this practice test in the description of my video. So you're more than welcome to follow along as I work these problems out. Okay. So let's get started with number one. Uh, and again, this is a mathematics knowledge test. Um, it's assuming that by the time you graduate high school, you've seen all these concepts before. So number one, we're looking at 10 exclamation point over 7 exclamation point. I said exclamation point because some of you might not realize that an exclamation point in mathematics is called a factorial. So that's 10 factorial over 7 factorial. It's a fraction. And in case you haven't seen it in a while, 1 factorial is equivalent to just 1. 2 factorial is equivalent to 2 times 1. 3 factorial is equivalent to 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is equivalent to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial is equivalent to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And when I say equivalent, that means 2 factorial is the same as 2 times 1. And when we do the math, we know that is just 2. 3 factorial is the same as 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 times 1, which is 6. Okay, so these actually produce uh, whole numbers. So let's go ahead and work out number one on the side here. We got 10 factorial, so that's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's divided by 7 factorial, so that's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, the trick to doing this problem is first to recognize what factorials are and then two or second to realize how you can reduce this. This actually reduces as such. You can simply cross out what you see in the numerator from the denominator. So you're just left with this. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, or not 7, 10 times 9 times 8. And we know that is 90 times 8, which is just 720. Okay, so number one is D, 720. Uh, number two involves dealing with uh, exponents. Um, just as a rule, and I'll put that over here, when you multiply uh, things to certain powers or bases that are the same to certain powers, you add them, add their exponents, and when you divide bases that have different exponents, you divide it. So, for example, 6 to the 5th. I'm going to change my... Uh, I'm going to change my, uh, the thickness of my pen here. 6 to the 5th over 6 squared. Um, that's the same as saying 6 to the 5th minus 6 squared, which is the same as 6 to the 5th minus 
6 squared, which is the same as 6 to the third. Okay? So you can see the bases are the same. We have 6. We have different exponents. So according to the rule, we would just subtract those exponents and get 6 to the third. Similarly, if we had 6 to the fifth times 6 squared, we would add the exponents and this would become 6 to the fifth plus two, 6 squared, which is just 6 to the seventh. Okay? So um, let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, to do this problem, I'm going to, and I'm going to go back to the thicker pen here. My mouse sensitivity is too high. Uh, to attack this problem, I'm going to work out the bottom first. That is, I'm going to add these two exponents, and then I'm going to deal with the division. Because again, we're working with order of operations still. So let's go ahead and re rewrite that over here. 6 to the 4th divided by 6 to the 3rd times 6 squared. Again, this is the same as 6 to the 4th over 6 to the 3rd plus 2, which is the same as 6 to the 4th over 6 to the 5th. Again, like I did up there, this now is subtraction since the bases are the same. So we got 6 to the 4th minus 5, which becomes 6 to the negative 1, which we can rewrite as 1 over 6 to the 1, or 1 over 6, which is right here, C. Okay. Um, we all know how to take square roots of something. Like if I were to take the square root of 64, I'd be looking for a number by which I can multiply itself twice to get 64. So 8 times 8 gets you 64. So we all know that this would be 8 for that reason. Uh, taking the cube root, cube, taking the cube root is the same idea. We need to find a number by which we can multiply itself three times. That will give us 64. We already know 8 times 8 is 64. So 8 times 8 is 64 times 8 would be a much larger number. 9 times 9 is 81 times another 9 is a very big number. 6 times 6 is 36 times another 6 is going to get us over 120. So just by eliminating answer choices that were obviously wrong, we could go with B. Let's go ahead and work it out though. So again, we got, we're looking for this. 4 times 4 times 4. If this equals 64, we know it's the cube root of uh, 64. So 4 times 4 is 16. And I'll do long division times that remaining 4. Again, this is 16 right here. And we have one 4 left. Uh, so 4 times 6 is 24. Carry our 2. 1 times 4 is 4 plus 2 is 6. 64. Done. Okay. Uh, number 4. Uh, this problem at first glance looks difficult, but what it's testing is your knowledge of the order of operations. That is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That is, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. The way this works is you do what's in parentheses first, you do exponents next, and then you do multiplication and division from left to right because these are considered equal, and then you do addition and subtraction from left to right. So if all the way on the left-hand side you have subtraction, you can do that before addition. Let's go ahead and rewrite this off to the right, and then we'll go ahead and try to do it. So we got 2, 5, minus, square root is 16, divided by, and I'm going to get rid of this real quick. Get our pen. 
pen back divided by parentheses 14 minus 12 times 3 okay so again order of operations parentheses we have parentheses right here and parentheses right here let's work those out first so let's bring down the 2 uh, square root of 16 that's the same as 4 so let's just rewrite that as 4 5 minus 4 is 1 divided by 14 minus 12 is just 2 times 3 Okay, so now we just simply refer back to this. We've worked out our parentheses. We have no exponents to worry about. Now we're on multiplication and division from left to right. Two times one is multiplication, so we'll do that. That's just going to be two. Division, let's see, we got two divided by two times three. Again, Look, multiplication and division are equivalent, as I said, and you work them out from left to right. So we do 2 divided by 2, which is just 1, times 3, which is 3. Again, as long as you can remember this, you'll never get a problem like that wrong. Okay? Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Alright, number 5 says solve for a, and we have the equation 7a plus 2 equals 3a minus 5 plus 2a. Uh, when I ever, when, whenever I see solve for some variable, in this case a, I always think at the end I'm going to have my equation looking like this. a equals something. That is, a is going to be on one side and everything else is going to be on the other. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. 7a plus 2 equals 3a minus 5 plus 2a. I really got to get a pen uh, so I can write these a little better. Um, so again, we're the goal is to get a by itself. So we're basically just going to rearrange the equation such that we ultimately get a by itself on one side. So what I'm going to first do is combine this 3 and 2a to simplify the equation a little bit. So we got 7a plus 2 equals negative 5. 3a plus 2a is 5a and those are like terms. I couldn't add 3a to negative 5 because there's no a here. 3a and 2a are like terms, so I can add them. Okay, so now I'm going to do two things, but I'm going to do it, I'm going to break it down as simply as possible. I'm going to move this 2 over here. So I have 2 here to get this to 0. I have to take 2 away from there. And what I do from one side, I have to do to the other. So this becomes 7a, again, we're not doing anything with that right now. Plus 2 minus 2 becomes 0 equals negative 5 minus 2, that's negative 7. And again, we still have this plus 5a hanging out here. Now I'm going to move this 5a over here. And to do that, I'm going to do the opposite sign. This is plus 5a. So to get rid of it, I'm going to minus 5a from this side, or subtract 5a. And then what I do to one side, I have to do the other, minus 5a from that side. 7a minus 5a becomes 2a equals negative 7. 5a minus 5a becomes 0. Okay. Now we got to get rid of this 2 in front of the a. Again, the goal is to get just a equal to something. So I'm going to divide this side by 2. When I do to one side, I have to do to the other. This cancels out. 
I'm left with a equals negative 7 over 2, which is the same as negative 3 and 1 half. Okay, I could work that out, but I'm not going to. Okay, let's get rid of this, some of this stuff. And again, if I was taking the cat as fab, um, the questions would start ramping up in terms of difficulty fairly quickly. Um, that said, um, there is a limit as to how difficult the questions are going to be. Um, so if you're competent with math, you should reach that limit fairly easily. Oh, I don't want the pink one. Okay. Number six, solve for x. Again, it says solve for some variable. So at the end, we want x to be on one side by itself. And I'll just rewrite this over here. 5 times 2x minus 1 equals 3 times 4x plus 3. Again, order of operations, that's going to be important. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Can we do anything in these parentheses? 2x minus 1, those aren't like terms, so I can't take 1 away from 2x. 4x plus 3, again, not like terms. So in this case, what I have to do is distribute this 5x. Specifically, I'm going to multiply it here. And here, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 5 times 2x becomes 10x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And I have to do the same thing here. I'm going to take this 3 and multiply it there. And I'm going to take this 3 and multiply it there. I'm distributing it. 3 times 4x is 12x. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, now this problem is no different than this one that we just did. This We've just worked this one out. So now we're going to start rearranging the equation such that we get x on one side. And we're going to be careful how we do this so we make the least amount of work possible. Um, I like x to be positive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 9 and subtract it from this side. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 9 minus 9 becomes 0. Negative 5 minus 9 becomes negative 14. So this becomes 10x minus 14 equals 12x. Almost there. I want to move this 10x to this side. So I'm going to subtract it. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Minus 10x. Positive 10x minus 10x becomes 0. I'm left with negative 14 equals 10, 12x minus 10x becomes 2x. Again, I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. This causes the 2 to cancel here, and I'm left with x equals negative 14 over 2, which is the same as negative 7. Okay, let's get rid of that work real quick. Okay, number seven says evaluate the expression if x is zero and y is three. Okay, again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and I like to put the arrows over the multiplication, division, addition, subtraction to know that they're equal and we work from left to right on those. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those into the equation to start. Again, x is 0, so we got 0 plus y is 3, so we'll plug in, oops.
0 plus 3 cubed minus 5 times, again, x is 0, so we'll plug that in, plus 7 times y is 3, so we'll plug that in. Again, it, we're, we're given x and y, and it's telling us to evaluate this, so we're going to find a whole number at the end. Um, parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. We do have parentheses that we can do, 0 plus 3. That just becomes 3 cubed minus 5 times 0 plus 7 times 3. We do have exponents, 3 cubed. So we just got rid of the parentheses right here. Now we're working on exponents. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 27 minus 5 times 0 plus 7 times 3. That's bad 7. Um, now we're working from left to right on multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we got 27 minus that subtraction. So we're not going to do this one right now. We're just going to leave it there. 5 times 0, that's multiplication. So we can do that one. 5 times 0 is just 0. So that goes away. And I'm going to get rid of that subtraction since the 5 went away, or the negative 5 went away. And then plus 7 times 3. Again, that's multiplication. 7 times 3 is 21. Take a look what we have left. 21 plus 27, that's going to be 48. Um, number 8, we're dealing with uh, inequalities. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this one. Again, it says solve, and as you can see, we're going to have x on one side. As a rule of thumb, or as a rule, when you add or subtract across this uh, inequality sign, it doesn't flip the sign, but when you divide or multiply by a negative, it flips the direction of the sign. So like if I had negative 2x less than 1, and I wanted to solve for x, if I divide it by a negative 2 on both sides, this would go away. But since I divide it by a negative 2 on both sides, this x would, this inequality would flip. It'd be x is greater than negative 1 half. Okay, addition and subtraction across the inequality sign, fine. Multiplication and division of negatives flips the sign. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. We got 3 plus 6x is less than or equal to 3x minus 3. Again, the goal is the same, to get x's on one side and whole numbers on the other. So to start, I am going to subtract 3 from this side. And what I do from one side, I'm going to do to the other. This becomes 0. Since I'm subtracting across the inequality, I do not have to flip it. So this gives me 6x less than or equal to 3x, negative 3 minus 3, and that becomes negative 6. Okay, now I want to move this 3x over to the left. So I'm going to subtract 3x here. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. This goes away to 0. 6x minus 3x becomes 3x less than or equal to negative 6. Now I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That leaves me with x is less than or equal to negative 6 over 3, or x is less than or equal to negative 2. And there it is, b. Okay. 
Number nine, what is the name of a quadra quadrilateral with four equal sides? So we all know a square is a quadrilateral, it has four equal sides. If that was there, we'd be done, okay? All these sides are equal in length, but that's not there. Trapezoid, what's a trapezoid look like? One of these things. Are all those sides equal? No, just these two sides are equal. Par par parallelogram, that looks like this. Again, these two sides are equal. That side and that side's equal, so not all four are equal. Pentagon has five sides. What about a rhombus? Let me fix that real quick. Rhombus is a square just on a tilt. And yes, all the sides are equal. So C. 55 degree angle, so let's look at this one. 55 degree angle is, so let's take a look. If we go straight up from a line, we know that's a 90 degree angle. Um, okay, anything past this 90 degrees is called obtuse. So anything from here over would be an obtuse angle. And anything uh, from 90 degrees under would be an acute angle. Okay. Again, this is 90 or benchmark. Um, 55 is less than 90. It's right about there. So it would be acute. Sosceles triangle. Sosceles triangle is simply a triangle with two equal sides and two equal angles, namely these. Okay. All right, number 12. The side of an equilateral triangle is 20 centimeters, its perimeter. Okay, so two concepts here equilateral triangle, it's a triangle that has all the sides that are the same. So that's equal to that and which is equal to that. Perimeter is the distance around an object and basically for a perimeter you would basically add up all the sides which in this case there's three of them. If we know this one's 20, this one has to be 20, this one has to be 20 so we know our perimeter is side plus side plus side. So it's 20 times 3, so we know our perimeter is 60. All right, number 13. The area of a rectangle is 144 inches squared. If the length of the rectangle is 16 inches, what is its width? So area of a rectangle is equivalent to length times width. In this case, we're given the information that uh, the length is 16, but we're asked to find out what the width is. So in this case, we have this area equals 16 times some width. Uh, we're given the area, so we know 144 equals 16 times some width. To get W by itself, we divide by 16, divide by 16, this cancels out. We're left with W equals, our width is 144 over 16, which is, my math's not that good, 16 times 3 doesn't get you 144. 16 times 5 doesn't get you to 144. 12 times 12 is 144, so it's going to be 9. Okay, number 14. And let me get rid of this real quick.
The circumference of a circle is equal to 10 pi centimeters. Its radius is. So uh, with regard to circles, it's useful to know that there are two measures of circles that we take in math more often than not. Uh, the area of circles and the circumference. And there are two formulas you need to be familiar with for this test. Circumference of a circle is equal to pi times the diameter or pi times two radiuses or two r. Uh, similarly, uh, area is always going to be pi times a radius squared. As long as you know these formulas, uh, you'll be fine. Um, in this case, we're told that the circumference, and again, circumference is how I like to think of circumference. Circumference is the, it, let's say you were to start right here and walk this way around the circle. That's all that's measuring, how long it takes you to walk around the outside of a circle. Area, on the other hand, measures the face of the circle. Okay? So circumference of a circle is equal to 10 pi centimeters. Its radius is. Okay? This is where it's useful to know this. Uh, circumference is equal to 10 pi. So we know the radius is going to be... going to be this, pi times 2 times 5, okay? Because we're using this formula, 2 times 5 will get you circumference equals pi times 10, which is what we know, so we know the radius is going to be 5. Again, you have to be familiar with both of these forms. Two more to go and we're done. How much will it cost to paint a circular patio of radius 7 meters if the cost of paint per square meter is uh, $2? So again, we have a, some circular patio like that. We're interested in the area because they're painting the, the surface. Okay. So in other words, what is the area of um, what is the area of this circle? Um, so we have area equals pi r squared. Um, we're given the radius is 7. So we have area equals pi 7 squared. Again, order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. No parentheses, but we do have exponents. Area equals pi 7 squared is 49. Okay. Now this is where things get tricky. Um, pi, when you have to, we have 153 square meters. Let's go ahead and multiply this by the $2. And we'll get our total. Again, just move your decimal to add it back in at the end. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry the 1. 8 times 2 is 16. Add 1. 17. Bring the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Add 1. That's 7. Um, 5 times 2 is 10. And carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 3. Or 2. Add 1. That's 307. So it will cost 307.72 to paint the circle, which is just 308. They round it. Last one. A rectangular box has a length of 7, a width of 3 feet, and a height of 2 feet. What is its volume? So immediately you want to note that volume is always going to be cubed. 
So let's go ahead and get rid of this one. If you don't see any answer choice with volume squared, that's referring to feet or surface area. Volume is always cubed. Um, the volume of a rectangle is simply length times width times height. That's the formula. So if we have a rectangle, and I'm going to try to do it as best I can here. It's more cubish, but it's a rectangle with a length of 7, a height of 2, and a width of 3. We simply just plug those in. Volume equals 7 times 2 times 3. Volume equals 7 times 3 is 21 times 2. Volume equals... 42 feet cubed. Again, they would have tricked you with the squared there. Um, so that's all I have for this video. Uh, as you uh, saw, it took a lot of knowledge of formulas as well as um, arithmetic to do well on this section. Um, my advice to you is, again, to get the ASVAB for Dummies book. And once you get pretty comfortable with some concepts you haven't seen in a while, take as many practice tests as you can. I'd say to be safe, um, I would take anywhere from five to 10 practice tests. And when I say take practice tests, I'm not saying practice mechanical comprehension and stuff like that. Just practice what the section, the sections that are gonna boost your AFQT score, that is, Practice arithmetic reasoning, practice word knowledge, practice math mathematics knowledge, and practice paragraph comprehension. All this other stuff is unimportant. Um, if you do well on the AFQT, let's say you get a 70 on the AFQT, you'll qualify for most jobs in the military. So all that said, um, I'd appreciate any comments or feedback in the comments section below. But on that note, I'll go ahead and cut you guys loose. Konnichiwa.